Well, I, I thought I'd continue on with the discussion about the anointing last week and make it clear from the scriptures. Many speak of the anointing in relation to preaching, blessing, the Holy Spirit, living holy, feeling blessed, feeling the Spirit, and such say that they feel anointed or he's anointed, or she's anointed. You don't find that expression anywhere in the whole of the New Testament in relation to those matters. Not a word. I looked it up. Jesus promised his disciples not an anointing, dunamis power. Power. Dunamis is the Greek, and it means power, to have a miracle, power to do a miracle, power to perform a miracle. So on the day of Pentecost, in Acts 2, 4, they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That was the power. That was the dunamis. Because Jesus said that that's what would happen. Dunamis. Power. Now, in 2 Timothy 2, 1, Paul said to Timothy, you must be empowered by the favor of the anointed one and then be a soldier of the anointed one. There was an occasion when Jesus said to the disciples before he left, they had asked him this question. Tell us, Lord, when... Is it going to happen? You're going to get the kingdom and get on the throne and rule on earth. That's what they were saying. Jesus turned round and he said in one translation, it's none of your business. It's none of your business to be aware of the times or the seasons which the Father has purposed by his own will. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Do namus. And you will be preachers and witnesses of the gospel, he said to the disciples, in Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the world. He was speaking about the ends of the Roman Empire. He wasn't speaking to us. That's a shocker. He was speaking to the disciples. And they literally did that. I have some of the extra books of the Bible that should be in our canon and were there for the first three or four hundred years and all the Christians read them. The Acts, further Acts of Peter, Andrew, Paul, Thecla, a woman, and so forth, Philip, where they literally obeyed it and they went to different places in the Roman Empire they gathered together and they said, the Lord has said to go to different places. Where will you go, Peter? Where will you go, Andrew? And they went to mostly different places. And they ended up, some of them right at the very end of the Roman Empire. Even Andrew ended up in Scotland. And he even went halfway down Africa as far as the Sudan area. He went all across northern Europe. He went into Russia and he went into those countries near Russia to the west and uh, they did what Jesus said because they were filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Now we also are to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost without a doubt. But it's something different that is said to us if we looked into that matter which most of us have not done in the past. And I'm doing it now. And this is what happened on the day of Pentecost. There was a noise and a shaking. The noise actually filled the city of Jerusalem. The shaking was of the temple. The 120 disciples were gathered in the temple in Jerusalem. It was a vast complex. And they were in one of the upper rooms in the temple. And the Holy Ghost came. And there was a shaking and a kind of a, 
earthquake effect. The building shook, so they must have shaken. And the Holy Spirit came in, into the room, in a supernatural way. And he came in and lit upon each one that was distributed tongue of fire that sat upon each one. And then they all were filled with the Holy Ghost and spoke in supernatural languages. These are some of the translations. They spoke, the Spirit prompted, and they, it was given them what to speak as the Spirit enabled them. It is power, not anointing. Power. Not fire, power. We don't get fire. We don't get anointed. We get the power. You remember in the, in the video we did on uh, Paul, how in a certain translation it says, Paul's power increased. It was the power of the Holy Ghost. Our power should increase over the years. Our power of the Holy Ghost that isn't, isn't ours in the sense that we're the source. It's ours in the sense that it's the gift. It's in the gift of the Spirit that is given to every believer who believes in the gift of the Spirit, and most believers don't. I'd say 98% of those who call themselves Christians do not believe in being filled with the Holy Ghost. They think they already have Him when they do not. You do not get the Holy Spirit when you're saved. You get Jesus. You get Jesus Christ. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Not the Holy Ghost in you, the hope of glory. Christ is the Saviour, not the Holy Ghost. Then we read how it says that when the saints met with Paul after he was converted, they saw the power that was with him because he was an apostle. He was called to be a preacher. So he had power that was in a sense different from the power everybody gets when they're filled with the Holy Ghost. It was a power to act as an apostle. It was a power to preach as an apostle. It was a power to do signs and wonders as an apostle. It was a power to do miracles as an apostle. It was a power to raise the dead as an apostle. But first and foremost, what was the most important was he became a preacher of the gospel. And to be an apostle, first of all, you have to be called by Jesus Christ and you have to be a preacher of the true gospel. When I see some people who call themselves evangelists over the years, famous ones, and they don't tie in with what the evangelists did in the New Testament, signs and wonders and healings, I say they're not a Bible evangelist. And there was a very famous one, well, maybe how many years ago? 50 years ago, <laughs> that long ago. Jesus is anointed. He works his anointing through us in salvation. But he works his anointing through us in the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul says, and he was, an apostle of Christ, which means the anointed one. Christ is Christos, the Greek. We don't speak Greek. We speak English. So we say Jesus the anointed, but of course it's become common to say Jesus Christ. Now this is what anointed means, to smear or to anoint on a person. In 2 Corinthians 1.21 it does say, God has anointed us. For what has he anointed us? How has he anointed us? 
Why has he anointed us? What is that anointing? The ISV translation says, the one who makes us secure in union with Christ, the anointed. He has anointed us. It is God. So why has he anointed us? Because he has made us secure in Christ. And the anointing, who is Jesus the anointing, the anointed, flows through to us. And God has anointed us to be in union with Jesus Christ. 1 John 2.20 says, You have received consecration. Not the anointing as in the King James Version. You have received consecration from the Holy One. There's another verse that says, We have faith in the anointing of Jesus. So everything to do with salvation is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. So when we are anointed by God, it is because we are in union with that Anointed One in salvation. Salvation means we, we become saved from sin and death and hell and Satan and that we become united with Christ. And in that way, God has anointed us in salvation and the anointing comes to us through the Anointed One who is Jesus Christ. It is God who has guaranteed that our purchase along with you, says Paul. And it is God who has anointed us. Now, there has also been a sealing. He also has sealed us and gave us a spirit in our hearts, talking about being filled with the Holy Ghost. See, this is sealing, not salvation. Two different things. You have salvation when you are given faith to believe in Jesus and to receive him as your saviour. That's salvation. But that's not to do with the Holy Spirit. Now we do know the Holy Spirit has been at work in you, convicting you of sin, maybe, showing you Jesus, making you receptive to hearing and listening and believing the gospel making your eyes open to the truth, the work of the Holy Spirit. But it is Jesus who is the Saviour. And when we are sealed with the Holy Spirit, we are filled with the Holy Spirit. We used to always say baptised with the Holy Spirit because we all were ignorant about baptisms and we thought, oh, we get baptised with the Holy Ghost just like they did on the day of Pentecost. We have a similar experience, but Paul calls it sealed. He never mentions you're baptized with the Holy Ghost. Never. It's always a sealing, as it says in Ephesians. He also sealed us and gave us a spirit in our hearts as a down payment of what is to come. As Paul is concerned, his power incre increased in his ministry. Nowhere is said Paul was anointed. You don't read it. So we are not anointed like they're all saying we're anointed, anointed to give. <laughs> anointed to preach, no. We have power to preach. And if we give, it's because the Spirit's worked on our hearts and taught us obedience to the word of the Lord which is in the Gospel. So the anointing that people are talking about has nothing to do with feelings. Supernatural praying in the Holy Ghost, in other tongues, builds a person up. That's what it does. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 14. We edify ourselves or we build ourselves up. We don't get anointed. What we do is, as it says in 2 Corinthians 3, we are changed from glory to glory, especially when we go from one language to another. Often you can hear yourself. Your language is changing. You're going from glory to glory. That's the way I see it, because I believe it. 
I've seen it happen in my own life scores of times. And I've seen it happen in the lives of other people. So it's nothing to do with feelings. Not a thing. But we being human, our feelings get touched. Our tongue gets touched. The Holy Spirit moves our tongue. Did you know that? You're speaking in tongues, but the Holy Spirit's doing it. Otherwise, it's not supernatural. You're just going ba 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 ba. That's not other tongues. It could be the beginning. It could be the power of the Holy Ghost beginning to work in a person's tongue, lips, and throat, but the person won't give in, won't, won't open their mouths and speak. We have a, got a lot of good videos on this that go back some years. We have videos whereby you can see children praying marvelously in other tongues, in other tongues, as a lot of people say, but it's really other languages. And the Apostle Paul said, when I pray like that, my spirit prays. Your spirit prays, not your soul. Your soul is the source of your natural emotions. Your spirit is the source of heavenly joy. Your soul is the source of the sorrows that come and you feel. The soul is the source of your sin, of your carnal nature. Not your spirit, because your spirit is recreated and you've become a new creation in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. In Jesus the Anointed. So we're in the Anointed One. We're not anointed in relation to the Holy Ghost. We have the anointing. We are anointed by God because we're in the one he has specifically anointed as Jesus the elect. And we call him Jesus Christ, but it's Jesus the anointed. That's what it means. So we use our faith. It says in, I think it's, Romans, Romans 12, I think it is. It says that he who prophesies has more faith than he who speaks in an unknown ta a language because you have to allow your mind to be involved. When you pray in a supernatural language, it doesn't come from your mind. You don't think it up. It bypasses part of your mind. It bypasses your ability to choose your own language. If you know English, you choose your words. If you know French, you choose your words. Whatever language it is. You speak it from your mind, you remember. If you have learned a new language for other than what you were born with, you will remember you have to memorize oh, this word, this sentence, you have to memorize. You use your memory. You don't use your memory to speak in other tongues. It's a completely supernatural action of the Holy Ghost. It's an action that gives you power. It's not an action that gives you an anointing. The action that gave you the anointing was your salvation. When God anointed you because you became united to Jesus Christ. And as it says in the scriptures, he who is united to Jesus Christ is one spirit with him. Not one body, one, not one flesh, not one anointing, even one spirit. We are one spirit with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I remember preaching this in a little meeting in India, where there were, had, were some Catholics who had been filled with the Spirit. And I remember one of them opening her Bible and looking in surprise and wonder that this could be you and I, who belong to Jesus, are one Spirit with Jesus himself. So now I hope we know the differences in anointings and the difference between anointing and power. It is power, not anointing. Power, not fire, power. We don't get fire. 
We don't get anointed. We get the power. 